Ryzen 3000 on Linux, what can I say? How much of your life do you not want on Zen 3000? Just buy it! No, I'm, I'm making fun of Tom's hardware in case you didn't, because they did that. They actually had one article that was just buy it, and the other one was don't buy it, and <sighs> never mind. You might have heard, there's, there's some new processors out. I got to do an unboxing for the AMD Ryzen 9 3900, 12 cores and an AM4 socket with dual channel memory. So Linux, how's Linux on the new platform? Well, the first two motherboards that I had in to test was the Gigabyte Aorus Master and the Azeroth Tai Chi. I'm happy to report that Linux basically was fine on both of these. Now the bad news is that there are some weird problems with Linux, depending on what you want to do. The biggest problem so far is Fedora 30. The particular version of the kernel that Fedora 30 ships with um, doesn't boot, and it's a very strange situation. So if you boot on bare metal, the installer crashes. If you, uh, say, create a Windows machine on bare metal and then install VirtualBox, and then try to set up Fedora 30, it crashes in the same way, which is very unusual. So what I did was download Debian because, hey, Debian, super conservative. That worked. I was able to install Debian, Debian was fine. So I figured I would try to close the loop. I set up a um, VirtualBox Debian VM on Windows and that was fine. And then I installed the same kernel version as Fedora 30 uses. And I rebooted and that was not fine. Uh, so I rolled back one kernel version and rebooted and that was fine. And then I tried the new kernel version again, then the same Fedora 30, that was not fine. Uh, but it was crashing with an invalid instruction type crash. So I rolled forward to the newest kernel, it's like 5.1 point something, and that actually worked fine on Debian. So then I rebooted Debian into the same kernel version as Fedora 30, and that worked. So somehow the 5.1 kernel was leaving the machine, not the virtual machine, because I'd closed and reopened VirtualBox a number of times in some kind of a state to allow the Fedora 30 kernel to boot in a virtual environment. Ubuntu 18.04 LTS, 18.10 are all basically fine. Definitely strongly recommend in any of those scenarios that you upgrade your kernel to the latest one just because AMD's developers are supplying a lot of patches to the Linux kernel. Now know what is on your mind IOMMU groups. At first, I was kind of panicking. I was freaking out a little bit. We got the X570 Aorus Master. We got the uh, Azrock Tai Chi. So it turns out that the IOMMU groups are different from motherboard to motherboard. You really should wait until the full motherboard review. But with an updated BIOS, we're seeing IOMMU groups for both of the, well, for the NVMe directly into the CPU, the by 8 by 8 um, electrically into the CPU. And then we've also got uh, slots that are PCI Express by four through the chipset. And those are also in their own IOMMU groups on the X570 Aorus Master. This is really the best possible situation. So our test system here has a Blackmagic capture card, a, uh, you know, I think a Radeon 5700 graphics card, and then a 10 series NVIDIA card, plus some NVMe. And it really does break up the IOMMU groups nicely. Now you do need to enable SVM, that's not on by default in the BIOS for secure virtualization. And also IOM IOMMU needs to not be on auto, it needs to be on enable. The reason auto is a partial enablement. So you need to make sure that's on. But it's good news for Linux folks. Uh, but like I say, wait for the full motherboard reviews, but generally, real excited. Now, people that beta tested the early Agizas, there were all sorts of problems like PCI Express reset and that kind of thing. I tested some of the early Agizas with the Ryzen 2700X CPU and uh, I was super paranoid and I was sending off all kinds of emails like, guys, guys, oh my God, it's broken, guys. I don't, I think it did some good. I'm hoping it did some good because things are actually way better with the release version, like the Combo Pi. Agiza 1.0.0.3, I think, and 1.0.0.2 are uh, the versions that were supplied to press during pre-release for these motherboards. I am working on getting an Asus and an MSI motherboard in to test more. Confirmed working, I did the ASRock Phantom Gaming RX 590 for VFIO and for host graphics. I've got the Gigabyte GTX 1060, also worked really well in terms of being able to reset, that kind of thing, and the RTX 
2070. Now, if you do run into reset issues, there are some reset issues with Vega. Generally, Sapphire cards are better. They generally have their stuff together. Now, the NVIDIA cards do, you get the code 43 problem you gotta work around, but the NVIDIA cards do work with the latest Agiza. There's also the PCI Express 4.0 thing. So PCI Express 4.0, when you have a lot of peripherals in the system on these motherboards, it can be a little picky. And uh, you might have to reseat your card or do some other stuff like that. You might see some PCI Express errors or uh, AER errors. And so you may have to disable PCI Express ASPM. There are definitely some teething issues around this platform. If you want a flawless VFIO experience, you, want, you might wait a month or two before you really dive in. But the fact that AMD has done so much more than Intel in terms of IOMMU separation and on the AM4 platform, I think we're in really good shape because remember on X470 and X370 from the Asmedia chipset, all of that was in one IOMMU group. It's basically everything there was just one PCI Express connectivity. It was just one thing. That's no longer the case on X570. Well, you know, if I've got a really good third, second or third generation motherboard or first or second generation motherboard for Ryzen, will I be able to use PCI Express 4.0? Will I be able to use PCI Express 4.0 in my B450 or my top of the line X470? And the answer is no. I mean, even if it happened to work, motherboard manufacturers should not support that because somebody might say, oh, my motherboard works with PCI Express 4, but another motherboard might not work for that. Now it'd be perfectly fine if you were using like a PCI Express by 4 capture card or some other PCI Express peripheral, but running two graphics cards in that configuration, I know because we've done the, the VFIO work, some of those motherboards were problematic. If you're not looking to do VFIO or IOMMU, I don't think you really need to run an X570 motherboard or PCI Express 4 because those NVMe PCI Express 4 SSDs, they're really fast. Everything else, basically plug and play in Linux. Uh, there is maybe, depending on what motherboard you're using, uh, there is maybe an issue with proper CPU fan control. There was a couple of times I was using the, I was using the RGB Wraith cooler, the 105 watt cooler that comes with these CPUs on uh, the motherboard and the CPU fan speed was not ramping up in Linux for whatever reason, but it was sort of intermittent. The way that I fixed that was to go into the BIOS and just manually set the fan speed and to a, you know something reasonable and problem solved. It also wasn't a problem if I moved the CPU fan connector from the CPU to something else. In general, in Linux, this CPU was running 4.1 to 4.3 gigahertz all core for pretty much everything that I threw at it. Yeah, that's pretty nuts. You got 4.4 as your top single thread here, 4.6 as your top single thread here. 4.6 on this 3900X is about equivalent to five gigahertz on the Intel platform for single thread. They are neck and neck, it is very close. AMD is just infinitesimally behind single thread speeds on the Intel side, but for Linux and any, anything that you might be doing, even lightly, thro lightly threaded things on Linux, if you're running that newer Linux kernel, uh, and depending on what your power profile is, you are not gonna be able to tell the difference between the platforms and you get 50% more cores for the same price or you can save over $100 by the time you take into account the cooling cost if you get the 3700X and still have eight cores. So the 5700 and the 5700 XT, how are they on Linux? You should probably wait. They're not ready yet. Now in terms of Linux support for the 5700 and the 5700 XT, AMD has moved heaven and earth to get the drivers ready. You will need to be running a newer kernel, like 5.1, but generally it's usable on the native machine on, on a console. So good job AMD, nicely done. AMD's performance claims are that they're, it's about equivalent to a 2060, a little bit better than a 2060 from NVIDIA, and a little bit better than a 2070 from NVIDIA. That's basically true. It, it depends on what game that you're running and how much optimization there is for a particular game, but that also holds true for Linux. Now, the big question for me was using uh, Wine and Proton and Lutris and other stuff under Linux to see how like Steam and like the Steam Windows emulation stuff behaved. And that was basically okay, though I think you should probably wait a little bit and see uh, what develops over the next couple of weeks. I'm rambling, it's time to go. This is level one, I'm Wendell. I'm gonna go hang out in the level one forums. If you're thinking about building one of these machines, come with questions, because you guys asking questions are what help me make videos and do stuff. So 
come ask questions and let me know what kind of a build you're thinking about and what kind of parts you want to learn more information and all this kind of stuff oh and this gigabyte gigabyte uh, PCI Express 4 2 terabyte NVMe SSD there is no reason anybody should be running spinning rust at this point all right I'll see you later 12 cores and AM4 I'm rambling this is Wendell no I've gotten that wrong <laughs>